Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Calling CQ via Q0100. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey calling and listening. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. About three and a half years ago, I built a dual feed antenna consisting of a helix antenna with an LNB. Now this was made from cut aluminium, copper wire and 3D printed parts, all from plans and files provided free of charge online by DC8PAT. Now this was version one of the ice cone antenna. Now fast forward another year and then Patrick sent me version two, all pre-built and tested. All I needed to do was add an LMB. Now fast forward to now, and here we have the Ice Cone version 2.1, still designed and manufactured by DC8PAT and available on an old engineering website. Now if you're watching this and wondering what on earth am I talking about and what is this used for, then let me quickly explain. Now a few years ago, a satellite was launched into space for use by ham radio operators the name of this satellite is q 100 and it's geostationary, meaning we do not need any tracking systems. We just point our dish at the satellite to be able to work through either the narrow band transponder where you'd normally find SSB communications, or we can use the digital amateur television wideband transponder to broadcast our real time video to other hams receiving from around the world. Now q 100 doesn't fully cover the globe, but it does reach from South America all the way to Asia. And the reason why we need an antenna like this with a helix antenna tuned for 2.4 gigahertz and then an LMB in the middle is because q 100 transmits its signal on 10 gigahertz, but it receives on 2.4 gigahertz. So by using a dual feed antenna like this, we can receive the 10 gigahertz signal using the LMB which incidentally then down converts the signal to a more manageable 750 megahertz. And then the helix part, the copper coil, is used to transmit our signal to q 100 on 2.4 gigahertz. This pretty much saves having two separate dishes. Now this version 2.1 ice cone antenna is 3D printed from PETG material, which is UV resistant. So great for leaving attached all the time and in all weathers. Now the ray dome, which is that white part which screws off, should always be left on as this protects the helix from rain, which if it got wet, then it could potentially detune it, which would not be very good if you're running high power. Now if you're wondering why upgrade to version 2.1 or what are the differences between the previous versions, well, to put it simply, version 2.1 provides a better receive signal and that's down to the newly designed helix coil. Now the helix coil is wider than the previous versions, which means there is less of a shadow over the LMB from the coil. Anything that gets in the way or in between the LMB and the dish will attenuate the signal. Now have you ever wondered why your satellite TV stops working when it rains heavy or when the dish gets covered in snow? Well, that's pretty much the reason. Comparing the design drawings, we can see here on the left, we have the new 2.1. And then on the right, we have version two with tighter coils and thicker wire. Now, according to the specifications on the website, version 2.1 yields a 0.7 dB receive attenuation over a 2.1 dB attenuation on version two. So before we take a look at the results of using this ice cone antenna version 2.1, let me show you what it's connected to. Now, I won't go over everything in this big jumble of wires, as I have a video series already on this channel. However, I do think I do need to create an updated video. So if you're interested in seeing a more detailed video of this kit and what's inside, then let me know down in the comments below. Now I was meant to put the front and top panels back onto this 2U chassis, but I keep adding parts, hence why it looks so messy right now. Essentially, we have a Winter Hill DATV receiver, which gives us four channels to receive DATV. Now this is all controlled from a Raspberry Pi 4. There's also an Adam Pluto SDR, which is used for transmit on DATV and narrowband SSB, obviously not at the same time. Now narrowband receive is also done on the Pluto SDR. Now the cable from the LMB comes into the rear of this black box and the signal is split four ways, 
Two of them go to the Winter Hill, one to the Adam Pluto, and one to an Air Spy R2, which provides a real time FFT display of the wideband transponder. The RF output of the Adam Pluto goes into an AMSAT driver board, and then that feeds off to that big silver 200 watt 2.4 gigahertz amplifier you can see just further away. Now, as I said earlier, if you want more details on this, then either go watch my build series on this or leave a comment below if you'd like a more detailed and updated video. So first, let's try DATV. And for this test, I'm receiving four stations at the same time. Now, all signal levels are really good and only around one dB down from when I was using the potty antenna, which is the patch of the year. Overall, the reception is fantastic. And with the amount of effort it takes to assemble and install this 2.1 ice cone, it definitely provides great results on DATV. OK, well, I've given the PA a good thrashing now, so um, I'm, I am more confident than I was before <laughs> that I'm not going to overheat. So that's that's not too bad at all. That, that must have been on an hour, I think. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, very good. OK, so let's try out the narrowband transponder. And for this, I'll switch to using SDR console and then change the voltage, which goes to the LMB from 18 volts down to 12 volts. So the polarization goes from horizontal down to vertical. M0 DQW calling CQ, CQ, CQ. M0 DQW calling CQ and listening for any call. Delta Lima forward to Alpha Quebec. The Delta Lima station, oh, there was a couple there, but uh, the Delta Lima was a little bit stronger. Go ahead. Delta Lima 4, Sulu Alpha Quebec, DL4, ZAQ, QSF. Yeah, DL4, ZAQ. This is Mike Zero, Delta Quebec with you. Very good afternoon to you. The name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango, and uh, I'm around uh, 20 miles northwest of London. Microphone back to you, DL4ZAQ, M0DQW. Now you may be wondering why my voice isn't lip synced with the video of me sat there making the QSO. Well, that's because the audio that you're hearing is actually the audio from the satellite being decoded via SDR console. So there's actually a bit of a delay from when I'm speaking because my voice has to be encoded and then transmitted up to the satellite. It then comes back down from the satellite, gets decoded again via SDR console and then played out onto the speakers. So that delay is why you're seeing a little difference between my mouth moving and the audio that you can hear. On my shack on uh, as shown on QS.com. It was a pleasure to meet you for the uh, very first time, Matt. Looking forward to um, work you again. Thanks for this lovely QSO. Mike Zero Delta um, Queen Whiskey Hotel Bravo 9 Hotel India November 73. Thank you. Yeah, 73 hands. Thanks very much for the contact. And hopefully we'll work again and uh, and have another chat about radios. <laughs> we could probably sit and talk all day about radios, but uh, anyway, have a lovely afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. HP9 HIN M0 DQW. Cheers, Hans. Cheers, my bad. G8 VLR. Sorry for the delay. It's uh, I've got a couple of tabs open where I'm keeping co keeping uh, tabs of uh, call signs, uh, but uh, I've got another tab. Um, and name's Roger, location is about 10 miles south of the city of Manchester. If you want a locator, India Oscar, 83, Victor Julia. Uh, I was listening to you talking to, I uh, can't remember, the, 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 the Swiss station. I think it was Swiss station anyway. And um, uh, you, you were virtually the, exactly the same setup as I am. So it's always nice to exchange um, information. Let's see if, uh, if Steve's back with us. Yes, yeah, Steve's in Hatfield. Hatfield. Not Hatfield, that's near me. <laughs> that's up north. Are you, there? Are you back with us, Steve? Um, I'm sorry to have jumped in on your QSO, but you just dropped out. I assume you were making some alterations to the drive. M0XVT, check VLR in the, in the group. Well, there you go, guys. That's a successful install and test of the Ice Cone dual feed antenna version 2.1 from Knoll Engineering.
Now, I do apologize to my American friends that QO100 is out of reach and it's below the horizon. However, something special was recently achieved, and that was a successful contact between the team who traveled to Newfoundland in North America, where QO100 is actually negative 0.9 degrees. However, they managed to make a successful contact through QO100 using FT8. Now, using FT8 through QO100 is a whole another topic and probably something I shouldn't air my views on. However, in this instance, it did prove to be quite useful. Anyway, guys, until next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.